In this unusual time, we gather in new ways to remember this day of Holy Week, the Friday that we call good. We will share in seven readings and will extinguish each light one by one. If you would like to gather your own candles to join in the act of worship, we invite you to gather and light seven candles. Pastor Jack and I will take turns sharing in the seven readings from scripture and will extinguish one candle after each reading. Marta and Artie will share some music throughout this service. And we offer our thanks to Donna who has helped to piece together all of these pieces for worship. As we remember a Friday long ago, we let that Friday speak to us on this Friday as we recall the crucifixion of our Lord. We dare to ent enter the valley of the shadow so that we might face the worst and having done so, we might walk with our Lord into the coming resurrection. May we find the good in this Friday as we follow Jesus to the cross. The first reading, Psalm 22, one through five. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you, our ancestors, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. John chapter 12, verses 27 through 36. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world is driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you will not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. May God add his blessing to this reading.
third reading from John 13, 21 through 30 and 36 through 38. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now one, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out. And it was night. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The fourth reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and handed Jesus over as they wished. May God add his blessing to this reading. Will you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, as our souls are filled with longing and pain, as we hear the words of the Gospels, the description of the treatment of Jesus Christ, your Son, who was sent into this world to save us and redeem us, God, we hear these words, and we are chastened. God, we lift up to you our sins, our weaknesses, the places where we have fallen short of you and your call, and we ask forgiveness. We know that you are there to grant us mercy and grace, for it is through your Son, Jesus Christ, that we have been promised these. God, as we gather on this Good Friday service to hear these words, to hear these readings, to extinguish these candles, extinguish in our hearts 
our own desires, our own longings, our greed, our anger, our jealousy, our anxiety, our fear, all of those things that lead us away from you and remind us once more of the great love that you show to us each and every day of our lives. Lift us up as we lift up your name and the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for it is through him that we have found forgiveness and redemption. We pray in his name. Amen. A fifth reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 19. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. The sixth reading from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do, not, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. May God's blessing be added to the reading of this word. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. reading from Luke 23, 
44 through 49. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things.
beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Today may be Friday, but Sunday is coming. May you and your family be blessed with peace.